Welcome to our session. My name is Ruth Robbins. I am a clinical specialist with 3M. And I'd like to thank Legs Matter on behalf of myself, my colleague Paul, and all within 3M for giving us the opportunity to share with you all Dennis's story. As we know, data suggests that lymphedema affects around 200 to 420,000 people of all ages around the UK. This disease, unfortunately, not only causes physical appearance of limbs, skin and tissue changes, and is a predispos predisposition to infection, but can also have a vast impact on mental health also. Today, we would like to share a patient's story whose condition has had both a physical and a psychological impact on both not only him, but his family's life also. We would like to thank Dennis and Kathleen for sharing this story with us. I am now going to hand you over to my colleague, Paul, who will introduce himself and give you some background to Dennis's condition. And then we have the um, opportunity to listen to Dennis and his wife tell their story to you. I'll hand you over to Paul now, thank you. Thanks Ruth, um, morning everyone. I'm Paul Robinson, compression specialist at 3M. I'm now gonna talk, um, going to introduce you to Dennis. He suffered low limb lymphedema for a number of years and subsequently this has had a huge impact or well, not just his, but his family's life. Um, after years of switching between various compression systems, often with up to five layers being applied, his mental well-being has been heavily affected. He's a patient at St. Anne's Hospice near Manchester, uh, where he's provided with help that's turned his life around and enabled him to look forward to the future once more and to plan things like holidays, COVID pending, of course, uh, which he hasn't done for the last 10 years. So the highly specialised lymphedema team there placed him in the Coban 2 system, where his compression was changed twice a week. And remarkably, after just three weeks, he saw significant improvements and a limb shape he hasn't seen for years. The significant improvements turned his glass half full and is now one of the faces of the Legs Matter campaign, where case studies, uh, case studies are available to view online. Um, he wanted to record a short video to share his story so others can see that there, are, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Dennis and his wife, as you'll see, are optimistic about the future now. Um, and as I've said, they're making plans to enjoy life once more. So we're now going to share Dennis's video in his own words. Um, it was recorded by the clinicians at St Anne's Hospice. Thank you. My name's Dennis Law, and I've suffered with lymphedema for nearly 10 years. And I'm his wife, Catherine Law. The whole started on my leg with a little blister about this big and it wouldn't stop leaking. It would leak day and night, day and night. And in the end I went to the doctors and, and he suggested these plasters, you know the plasters I've got in, I brought some plasters in and sort of all the fluid, but all I've done was swell up the fluid and stop anything. And in the end he said you don't have to be like bandaged. And that's and for me. Referred just to tissue pad filter. Oh, well. um, and there was this nurse uh, yeah. in the told us that he had an ulcer at the time. It got into an ulcer and it just wouldn't get better, would it? No. And it just went on from no, there, then no, for no. years in and years out. He just kept going in bandages, then he'd come out of bandages, then he'd have antibiotics. Then you go back in bandages, yeah. and that went on. That's been going on for the last ten years. And tissue fibrillation has suggested we come to see Fiona at St Anne's Hospice to see if she could help. Yeah because the bandaging wasn't doing anything, all it was doing was causing more swelling at the top of the leg because the nurses used to only bandage to the knee because they weren't qualified to do it. We're called to St Anne's Hospice to yeah. see Fiona yeah. and Lisa. 
And she put him in cold band. It worked wonders. And it's worked wonders. His legs improved 100%. 100%. His more mobile. No more breakouts. I suggested they went on antibiotics, small dose every day, year over the year. And last time we broke out when I was at St. Anne's Hospice with Bjorn and Lisa. So now I suggested they went on antibiotics, but once you cleared up to carry on with the antibiotics, yeah, trying you to get went on for a long the thing out of my system, weeks, like, got me. so like, like we had us before, I was on them for two weeks. This time it's only for four to five weeks, and since then it's, it's been great to have broke out and no trouble when we never got anything. Uh, and And one week you're Distrust. in bandages, and one week you're in garments. Yes, yeah, yeah. To try and sort of control. So I'm leaving me off the bandages, bandages. Um, and then I go into garments, so. It's it, been on bandages. It frees us up, it frees Fiona and Lisa up, like not to see another patient. And also, it's me a bit more time. And we're hopeful we'll get a holiday we'll next year. We'll get a holiday next year. Uh, not abroad, but we'll get, like, get away uh-huh. somewhere for a, If it's three or four days, it's been what we've been doing. We've been we living for nearly 10 years because so, his, uh, his legs always. It's so scared of it breaking down all the time. Like, oh, yeah. Because if you're away, like, you might not eat it. You suffer, but it's broke down, it's all leaking. Got more than you. Know, it was really like, you know, not systems and yeah, stuff. We like did that. go abroad once. The last time we went abroad was in 10, 2010, when you say. And tissue fibrility bandaged your leg for a week, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, they put short stretch on. And for a week. No, no, so they only stayed up. He couldn't do that on a holiday, he couldn't swim. Come from the or, or anything, it's a bandaging. That's like a mobility scooter. Just setting a mobility scooter. So... Little rides here and there. Just sat there. We're just going away, really. I've had different types of bandaging over the years. Um, I've had short stretch. I've had compression garments. And I've had wire player butts to the knee only, the calf, the ankle to, um, did it round your foot and up to your knee, and all I do was push everything above the knee, and I was getting terrible swellings in my thighs, it was really, really hard, you couldn't painful. move it, and it was really painful. But the bottom of your legs was as well at that yeah, time, yeah. wasn't they, yeah. as well, even though it was in bandages? Um, you used to come out of the nurse's touch, you weren't there, you say, oh, God, it hurts. And um, I'm done then. I would have heard to stay hands off this to Fiona and Lisa. And um, we had a talk when we got here, and she suggested about in cold band, but thigh high. Like, um, and it's worked wonders, it really has worked wonders. Best bandage tonight. I've been in, I can bend my leg. I couldn't bend my leg before in the fire way up, which is that thicker. Like, you know, and all the skull in the bowl, I, I couldn't bend my leg at the knees. I can bend it a bit more now, I can walk a little bit more now. Uh, not a lot, but I'm getting there eventually. But even though you was in the Bandages, short stretch, and the five weeks, it was still leaking right through, didn't it? If it got, down, yeah, yeah, it just like broke down, down, it was just breaking down constantly. I, I, I could smell it, Dad. I could smell it. Then my dad to ask the nurses to swab it. Yeah. Then he'd go back on more antibiotics for a week or so. Come off them. Yeah. Go back in bandages or juxtas, whatever, but it break yeah. down again in right the week or so. If you cleared up in the bandages, if they cleared up, they say, right, you know, right now, go back in the juxta. And that's what I'll I'll go back in the juxta, it might be four days, it might be ten days, and it'll break down again. And then I'll go back in bandages again, more antibiotics. I missed what I'm for like 10 years, I mean. And once it cleared up, 
Well, back in Jupiter, and they count again, and, and just a number. I don't know. The years and years and years. But nobody could tell us why it was happening, or was it? No. But the, and uh, I kept saying, we need to know yeah. why this kept happening. Yeah, so yeah, come to say hands. My bum, my bum break out since we come to say hands. I've been coming in now for three months, three and a half months. I've had a wonderful break, I was the only school thing you had back in my leg. And that cleared up on antibiotics and I've had, I've had no symptoms since and and this cold my man is in TV life. Yeah, as long as it completely changed your life. I can get my car a bit easier. I still can't use my foot with my leg life, but I'm gonna take an automatic car. Well um and in that but we have got photos that they want to see of how bad the leg was when it used to break down. When yeah. you couldn't walk completely, could you? No, no, no. And on two or three occasions, you've had rapid response where they've come out and put your own tricks. Yeah, yeah. And instead of three lots, they've had to come for six lots, yeah, haven't they? Yeah. They've come and done it six times in a row, which is very unusual. They said they only ever do it three. And then they brought a doctor from the hospital to have a look yeah, at yeah. one time to be home. Yeah, they did. To have a look because it was so bad. Old hospital, yeah. Well, it's not at it's called. And um, it was her who said, do more antibiotics by yeah. drink, won't it? But um, we still didn't get any answers for well, why it was happening, did we? No, no. We never knew why it was happening. But with the cold band, I've got to admit, it's brilliant. It's been brilliant. You can't believe his leg has been reduced. It's been your life a bit easier, yeah, hasn't it? Of course, it has, yeah. yeah. It really has. Do you know, it's changed your life as yeah. well, hasn't yeah. it? Which we're pleased with. Perfectly, it's gone to the moon. Hi everybody. I think as you can see, I would like to say a massive thank you to Dennis and Catherine and Fiona and Lisa from St Anne's also. And I think you can see there that was a very unedited and straight from the heart words that he, they shared with um, um, Fiona in, in clinic actually. Um, there was no cameras, no action really. It was just a small mobile phone and they were having a conversation. But I think it's really hard to actually sum up 10 years in 10 minutes. I'm sure there's been a lot of impact in their life over that time, but I think we can see very much that, you know, he's had to change his way of driving. He's had to not had a holiday for 10 years. And I think it shows that there's still quite a lot of misunderstanding around, um, you know, why people have edema or, or lymphedema or chronic edema for a long periods of time because even throughout that conversation you could hear um, them saying that you know they could never get an explanation of why everything was leaking and I think you know we've had a small glimpse in these COVID times of things that have been taken away from us you know I didn't have a holiday this year where I had it booked and I couldn't go for things out with my control you can see clearly they've had no holiday for 10 years because of things that were externally affecting their life. And I think um, for me, I think um, I, I feel that they're sharing, you know, part of their life with us. So thank you to everybody involved. I'm sure Margaret must see these patients day in, day out and can tell us much more about the impact it has. Uh, thanks. I'm Margaret Smedden, I'm Vice Chair of British Lymphology Society and um, part of the Legs Matter Coalition um, campaign. And um, it's great to be involved with the campaign and thanks to Dennis and uh, Catherine for sharing that story and for 3M for helping to make it possible. Um, but absolutely, I, I think 
it's a great example of why you should never ignore what seems to be a simple swelling, a simple blister, a simple tear in the skin that doesn't heal. Um, it can get so much worse and it's had such an impact on um, Dennis and Catherine over these years, physically, mentally, financially, socially, in every possible um, way. So it's great to see that he's getting his life back now. Um, and obviously products help and it's great. Uh, the Coban's a great product, but it's important if it's not healing with normal care to be referred to specialists because it's that comprehensive and um, skilled assessment that actually helps the patient to get the appropriate treatment for them uh, that makes all the difference. Absolutely, absolutely. I think, um, you know, we heard from Dennis that he did try, you know, lots of products out there and, you know, products are only one small part, as I'm sure you'll agree, Margaret, in the caring for these patients, you know, it is very much about, uh, you know, the right person treating the patient, you know, at the right time. And I think it's about that joint approach, isn't it, of finding what works for that patient. And, you know, obviously, Coban 2 was something that worked for Dennis, but, you know, there is a lot of a lot of choice out there and you just have to find what is what works for that patient and it's all about that that partnership isn't it with the with the patients we were very touched to be a small part of his life but absolutely it's lovely to see you know the that link between you know the lymphedema specialist nurses and the district nurses here he has a fantastic district nurse as well um, and they're all heavily involved in each other and it's definitely about support really isn't it I think people don't realise the um, the risk of lymphedema in terms of um, the pain, the recurrent infections, which can put people in hospital a lot of the time, and um, following the giving antibiotics for um, cellulitis associated with lymphedema is a bit different to a normal course of antibiotics, and there are specialist guidelines on Legs Matters site and the British Lymphology Society site. So that's uh, getting on top of that is a really important thing, but it's always going to come back unless you get the right treatment to the patient. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, some, probably something I would quite keen to ask yourself, Margaret, do you think that actually um, awareness is, is on the increase now? Do you think we're better informed or and do you think patients are better informed now than they have been in the past? Uh, I think it is better. Um, and getting better all the time, but there is still a lot of misunderstanding, as you say, um, out there. Um, people don't realise the impact it can have and the importance of treating it really early um, and the specialist skills involved when it's obviously a bit more, it gets a bit more complicated than a simple um, swelling. So, but it is getting better and there's a lot more uh, lymph matter campaigns helped specialists come together and I think we're getting clearer messages out now. That's great to hear Ed. So I think there's, there is a couple of questions in the chat that maybe we could look at and I'm not quite sure about the Q&As that have been, maybe anybody's got any questions, this would be an opportunity to please ask. We have a, we are very fortunate to have a specialist on the, on, on this um, call with us so um, please utilise that. I, I see there was a question from Sarah there saying, was there a reason he had to have hospice treatment over a, an NHS consultant or district care? Paul, can you answer that question, actually? Um, it's, it, yeah, it, his condition, um, as I said, it's, it's been treated for 10 years and he wasn't seeing any marked improvement. Uh, obviously, the team at St. Hans are highly specialised and they have more insight into what kind of treatments might work for him. But as you were saying, it's the right patient, right product, right time. Um, so it's important to make sure he's using the correct compression system. Yeah. Can I just add to that that being based on lymphedema services are can be based anywhere and it's not necessarily of significance that that, that one was based in the hospice. Um, it depends how they're funded mm. and, and managed. Yeah, absolutely. So, 
Um, I see, is there a question, any open questions? If you want to use your Q&A there, I think there's a Q&A at the bottom. If you want to type any questions or use the chat, um, I don't, we don't mind really if anybody wants to ask any questions um, about Dennis, um, about Catherine or about lymphedema, um, you know, and it's associated, you know, um, issues that it, it comes along with it, please feel free to do so. We've got about 10 minutes left for q and if you would like to use that opportunity. I think um, what I found quite um, heartwarming about the story of Catherine and Dennis's story was it was very much a joint um, interview. It, was, it wasn't even an interview. The conversation was very much, Catherine was heavily involved in the conversation. And I think that showed that she was very heavily involved in his, his care and his treatment you know, for the past 10 years. And I think that I think that investment that she's made in his in his treatment plan shows how much it doesn't just affect you, it affects your family when you have, you know, the people you live with. And, you know, Catherine hasn't had a holiday for 10 years either, you know, because of the condition that her husband shares. So I think I think that was a, a really good illustration of how you know not only it's not an individual thing it's not something that you carry yourself it's definitely your family's involved and she certainly she was a she she certainly is heavily involved in his care I think we could see that do you find again with your with yourself um Margaret do you find that that a family tends to come along with it with with the plan and you know uh, well, I think it varies. I mean, all families are different, aren't they? <laughs> but it makes a huge difference um, if it can be a team effort and there is support there. It makes an enormous difference to the, the patient in, um, because you need to be motivated yourself too. Um, the, the bandages and the compression are a key part of um, managing the edema, but they also need to look after their skin, they need to be active to help the lymphatic system work better. And if you're not supported and you get a bit down, it's really hard to do those things, you know, keep a, a healthy diet. And um, all these things are important too. So family and friend support are crucial. There's I see in the in the chat there actually, and you know, maybe you could help us out here with some of these 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 points that have been mentioned. So hi Chris. Um Thank you very much for joining. You know, I think I think it's nice to see that you're not alone. You know, it does it probably is a very lonely place. To, it feels a very lonely place to be when you're suffering from a condition like this. Um, the issue is deeper than misunderstanding. A referral in 1963 and a diagnosis. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's that's a long time to wait for a diagnosis, really. Absolutely. Um Chris, we can't hear you actually. It would be lovely if we could. So maybe if you've got your mute on or something, maybe try. I'm seeing this as an IT dinosaur. I'm actually trying to assist. I'm not very good at this myself. Um, but it would be lovely if you could speak. Keep trying. If not, keep ty keep typing. Um, Is that better? Can you hear me now? Oh, we can. Yes. Hi. <laughs> oh, I'm sat here in tears. Oh. And I just oh. wish I could give um, Dennis and Catherine a big hug. Oh, oh. Do, you, do you want to share some of your, would you like to use well, this opportunity to share something, you know, with us? You know, have you suffered, it looks like, from a lot for a long time? <laughs> uh, just, I don't want to take this away from and Dennis and Catherine. And heaven forbid they have been through so much. And I think... There's lots coming out of this, and perhaps one day I'll, I will, I'll be quite happy to put it in writing for you. Um, but I will only correct you on one little thing. Um, of course. You've used the word misunderstanding. What I have found out in my short, informed life is actually a lot of it is ignorance and denial. Having been mm -hmm. written off as, as fat for many, many years and worn the mantle fat for many, many years, Having had my diagnosis, it still took me eight months to start actually getting people around me to take that on board. So it's very mm -hmm. lonely. And, and I, I fully empathise with what they're going through. Oh, thank you for sharing that with us. That's, 
you know, I hope you've now found, you know, a support mechanism for yourself and a network of, of people now that can support you and you don't, moving forward, you don't feel as lonely as, as, as you feel at the moment. So I, I wish you all the best and I hope you, you, you get some resolution yourself. Oh, yes. I think, I think there's a double whammy because, um, as Dennis was explaining, it's very heavy, it's very cumbersome, so you stop moving, so you don't exercise, so you get fat, so the pain increases, so you stop moving even more, and you don't go out because you become a burden, and it, it becomes a vicious circle. It's a vicious circle and I absolutely can empathise with that. I think it is, you know, you, you you get stuck in almost that rut. You're like that hamster on the wheel that's going round and round, isn't it? And yeah. one thing leads to another, which leads to another, really. So onwards and upwards, I hope, Chris, for you. <laughs> Definitely. Thank, thank you so much. Thank no, you so thank much you for guys. joining today. Thank you. There is a couple of questions maybe, actually, Margaret, you could maybe help with. There's a lady, um, somebody called Jane has asked, that she's got lip edema and she's now getting a lot of swelling around the left lower leg, which she's assuming is lymphedema. How should this be treated? She wears compression for lip edema. Uh, well, I think um, they are two different things, but people with lip edema, which is more um, a, a, how fat um, builds up in the tissues, um, but they can get lip, lymphedema without a doubt. Um, and if they're attending a specialist, they should certainly um, see about that too, because it may make some difference to their, um, their treatment. But um, the same things are important about skin care, about movement, about compression, but whether that needs adjusted or not, she really needs to um, have somebody look at it. Mm -hmm. And I see there's one from Hilary asking is, and I'm presuming that's lipodermatosclerosis that you've written there, is similar to this. Now, from my background in vascular, I would say that it's a completely different condition. Um, and maybe Margaret would, would you know, um, agree with me on, on that question. Uh, yes. Um, it's not my field of expertise in terms of vascular either, but yes, I think it is. Yeah. I mean, lipodermatous sclerosis um, turns, tends to be hardening of the fat in your in your tissue, um, and it tends to give an appearance of a of of, of more like a, a bark, like a tree bark, and you tend to lose some of the some circumferential um, padding, really. So it's slightly different. So almost the opposite. You tend to get a um, a, a reduction in this in the volume as opposed to an increase in the volume. So maybe that. Hopefully that'll help. So not really related. Lower limb disease also, but slightly different cause, maybe. Yeah. I think there's an option if we that we can um, post answers to these. It, we might want to add a bit more to that after this session. Absolutely. On the website, if that Absolutely. would help. That's great, of course. I think um, potentially, I think that maybe be all the questions. I'm not sure about the q and I'll just have a quick look. That's perfect. Everybody's everybody's using the chat, which is nice. Um, I think we've only got a couple of minutes left. Is there anything you want to add yourself, Margaret or Paul? Um, no, I, I don't think so. I think it's 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 very sad that people are still waiting so long for a referral, um, and I would just encourage them not to give up, to keep asking until they can get that specialist referral. If they're not and getting the help that they need. And um, yeah, I'd just like to say thank you everyone for taking the time to watch the video today. Um, it looks like you found it useful. Um, you can watch the video on the Legs Matter, Legs Matter website as well. Um, and finally, I'd like to thank the staff at St. Anne's who took the time to um, work with Dennis as well. Thank you. And I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Margaret um, joining us with her expertise and um, we, um, it certainly has been an ad a great addition to our session. So thank you very much, Margaret. And thank you to um, Dennis and Catherine. We can't, we can't say. Okay. And I think without that, I think we'd say goodbye and enjoy the rest of your day, everybody.